comic book fans, Kevin Given back with you once again, and today we're going to look at the top 10 vampires in comic books, part 2. If your favorite vampire from a comic book is not on this show, check out part 1, which was done a few years ago. The very first video I ever did was the top 10 vampires in comic books. You can check that one out, see if your favorite vampire is on there. If it's not on either of these lists, then please leave me a mention in the comments section below. Don't forget to like my channel, ring the bell, and subscribe to my channel for more information on comic books. All you comic book fans out there are going to want to subscribe to my channel and check out my shows. If you love comics as much as I do, you're going to subscribe to my channel. I review comics for Comic Crusaders. I also have my own franchises, Adolescent Radioactive Samurai Platypi and Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter. They're available on Comics Central, Indie Planet, and Comixology. Check them out. Stay tuned to this broadcast for more information. Also, like the Facebook pages for each franchise. Check out my Patreon site for some neat original art artwork and shows that you won't find on YouTube. Let's begin the countdown. At number 10, we've got Absi. Now, here I am, reading from my novel, Last Rites, The Return of Sebastian Basilis. Just who is Absi? He was born in Egypt in 1414, around the time of the Burji dynasty, a few years before the time Sebastian was born as a child named Radu in Romania. When Absi was 24, he came down with an illness and purple lesions appeared on his skin. He had developed a fever of 103 degrees. Absi took to vomiting. By the tenth day of his illness, his vomit turned to blood. His lymph nodes swelled to twice their normal size, and he lost his appetite. He had developed diarrhea and was sweating profusely. Absi was in the final throes of the Black Death, the Great Pestilence, or what we would call today bubonic plague. He probably would have died that cold January night of 1438, except that he had wandered out onto the street in a fever-induced delirium and had been spotted by a vampire, Dai Jamal, who should have paid closer attention to his food. The vampire was so hungry that he swooped down on his meal. Even if Absi had been well, he would not have known what hit him. Dai Jamal sank his teeth into Absi's neck and drank a good-sized gulp of the blood before he realized it was tainted. He threw up and turned green, then ran off into the night. It would be five years before Dai Jamal could feed again. But for Absi, the vampire's bite was a lifesaver. After he had turned, his symptoms disappeared, and he was stronger than he could have ever imagined being. Absi had been so sick that he couldn't remember much about his life as a human. All he could remember is that he felt threatened by government officials. He rose quickly in Setite ranks after saving Aziz, the leader of the largest clan, from an attack by villagers in 1563. We come up to number nine. The number nine vampire from comic books is Cassidy, whose full name is Princeius Cassidy, an Irish vampire. Cassidy joins the Irish Volunteers and takes part in the Easter Rising in 1916, though his brother William, Billy, also joins to keep watch over him. Billy eventually forces Cassidy to desert the army because of its impending failure, and Cassidy is soon bitten by a hag who seemingly leaves fatal injuries. His body falls into the water, and he soon learns that he is not succumbing to the injuries, and that the sun burns his skin. He begins to wear sunglasses to hide his eyes, which are now blood red as part of his transformation into a vampire. He decides to travel to the United States so his family and other soldiers will believe that he is dead. He lives in the United States, picking up alcohol and drug problems, and even going as far as to prostitute himself for drugs. All of the proceeding is revealed to Jesse atop the Empire State Building in New York City. What he leaves out is that his addictions make him parasitical and irresponsible, in a way making him a figurative vampire as well as a literal one. Cassidy has superhuman strength and speed that can easily rip regular humans apart. Though he has no formal training, allowing Jesse to easily beat him without taking any injuries, except for a broken breastbone, which occurred when Cassidy offered his hand in friendship and then sucker punched Jesse. Cassidy can survive any physical wound, although he feels the full pain associated with the injury. He can heal superhumanly fast, and drinking blood allows him to accelerate the process. The only thing that can kill him is being directly in sunlight for a period of time, though he can stand indirect exposure with discomfort. Although Cassidy needs blood to sustain himself, he does not need human or even fresh blood, preferring instead the taste of beer or whiskey. He generally drinks blood from live humans only if they threaten him. In the AMC Preacher television series, Cassidy is portrayed by Joseph Gilgan. Unlike the comics, he usually appears without his trademark sunglasses. The number eight vampire on our list of vampires in comic books is Jade from Chaos Comics. From the comic book realm, she's appeared in Purgatory and Chastity Comics. She was bitten by the vampire Sakara simply in a moment of passion. 
The reason she's even at this massacre was that she and her father were in Egypt as the ambassadors at Queen Ostraka and General Ramsay's wedding. Many centuries later, she and the other victims tracked down purgatory to learn why this had been done to them, and they became enraged to learn it was a mistake. So she led the Shanghai crime family she had inherited for millennia. Other crime families believing that Jade was simply a title to the woman controlling the family every generation. But by the 20th century, she believed that China no longer had its former honor and dignity and so she tries to restore this by using her supernatural powers to unite the triad families underneath her, taking control of China itself. But Jade began dreaming of the world thousands of years ago, the time of her true love, Shiro, who loved her despite the fact that she was a vampire. Shiro met his untimely demise at the hands of the dragon human sorcerer Pei Lung, otherwise known as the White Dragon. Pei Lung did this seeking stores of an occult of ancient days, knowledge of this that was passed down to Jade by her father. Jade then proceeded to kill the White White Dragon, and using the volumes of knowledge provided by the occult, she became a master of sorcery. The number seven vampire on our countdown of the top ten vampires in comic books is Count Orlock, and it, he appears in several comic book companies, including Millennium, Viper, and Image. Count Orlock is the main antagonist and title character, portrayed by German actor Max Schreck in the classic 1922 silent film Nosferatu. He was based on Bram Stoker's character Count Dracula. Nosferatu, Count Orlock, is a vampire from Transylvania and is known as the Bird of Death, who feasts upon the blood of living humans. He is believed to have been created by Belial, the lieutenant demon of Satan. Orlock dwells alone in a vast castle hidden among the rugged peaks in a lost corner of the Carpathian Mountains. The castle is swathed in shadows and is badly neglected with a highly sinister feel to it. He is in league with the housing agent Nock and wants to purchase a house in the fictional city of Wasborg, Germany. Local peasants live in terror of Orlock and never venture out after dark. Thomas Hutter scorns their fears as mere superstition and ventures to the decrepit castle. However, the coach driver will not take him over the bridge leading to it. A black swathed figure in a black coach, which is Orlock in disguise, drives him the rest of the way. He is greeted by Orlock, who claims that as it is past midnight, all his servants have gone to bed, and the two dine together and discuss Orlock's purchasing of the aforementioned house. Hutter accidentally cuts his thumb when slicing bread, and Orlock is barely able to control himself from drinking from Hutter's wound. After Hutter collapses in a chair, Orlock feeds off him, but this is not shown on screen. Hutter discovers two bites on his neck the next day, but attributes them to mosquitoes unaware at this point that his host is actually a vampire. The 1979 film Nosferatu the Vampire was a remake of the original. Some of the characters reverted to their original Stoker names, including Dracula, but he was based on the Orlock variation. Dracula was portrayed by Klaus Kinski as a pathetic, lonely creature yearning for human love. Unlike the original character, however, he is merely incapacitated by sunlight and later killed by Van Helsing while paralyzed. Nosferatu is a graphic novel based on the 1922 silent film of the same name, modernized by Christopher Howard Wolf and Justin Wayne, and published by Viper Comics. Among the changes made to modernize the story is the revelation that female protagonists Tommy and Elle are in a same-sex relationship. Nosferatu, Plague of Terror, was a four-part comic series released by American publisher Millennium Publications in 1991 through 92. Conceived as both a prequel and sequel to F.W. Murnau's silent film, Nosferatu, A Symphony of Horror, it was written by Mark Ellis, designed by Melissa Martin, with art provided by Rick Levins, Richard Pace, and Frank Turner. The storyline presented a more complex complete story of Graf Orlock, the Nosferatu, separate and distinct from the Dracula legend. Returning from the Crusades in the 11th century, English knight Sir William Longsword stops at Orlock's castle in Transylvania, Romania, and finds the nuns dead or dying of plague. Longsword's squire, seeking treasure, inadvertently frees Orlock, who kills the man. He bites Longsword, but does not turn him into a vampire. Rather, he becomes immortal for reasons known only to Orlock. The series tracks Orlock throughout history as he perpetuates his evil, instigating wars and bringing down plagues. Longsword tracks him through 19th century India and the madness of the Vietnam War, and finally catches up to him in an abandoned cathedral in contemporary Brooklyn. The final chapter ends in a conflagration in which both Orlock and Longsword are killed, but the curse of the Nosferatu is passed onto an innocent, as it was to Longsword, ten centuries before. The series was notable for presenting a vampire character drawn from European folklore rather than the refined Anne Rice model that was in vogue at the time. A Nosferatu Plague of Terror compilation in graphic novel format was released by Millennial Concepts in October 2009.
The number six vampire on our list of top ten comic books in Vampires Part 2 is Manu Aldi, who was inspired by the William Marshall character Blackula. Manu Aldi is a character that appears in Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter comics and was inspired by the Blaxploitation character Manu Aldi from the Blackula franchise, starring William Marshall. Blackula is a 1972 American Blaxploitation horror film produced for American International Pictures. The film was directed by William Crane and stars William Marshall in the title role about an 18th century African prince named Mamualdi, who was turned into a vampire and later locked in a coffin by Count Dracula in the Count's castle in Transylvania in the year 1780 after Dracula refused to help Mamualdi suppress the slave trade. Nearly two centuries later in the year 1972, two interior decorators from modern-day Los Angeles, California traveled to Castle Dracula in Transylvania and unknowingly purchased the now undead Mamualdi's coffin, which they shipped to Los Angeles. Unlocking the coffin, and the decorators release Mamualdi, becoming the first two victims as a vampire turning them and others he encounters in his bloodthirsty reign of terror into vampires like himself. Mamualdi later meets a woman named Tina, played by Vanetta McGee, whom he believes to be the reincarnation of his deceived wife, Luva, and also played by McGee in the pre-opening credit scenes at Dracula's castle. Blackula was released to mixed reviews in the United States, but it was one of the top grossing films of the year. It was the first film to receive an award for best horror film at the Saturn Award. Blackula was followed by the sequel Scream, Blackula Scream in 1973 and inspired a wave of blaxploitation themed horror films. Scream, Blackula Scream is a 1973 American blaxploitation horror film made under the working titles Blackula is Beautiful and Blackula Lives Again. It is a sequel to the 1972 film Blackula. The film was produced by American International Pictures and Power Productions. This was the acting debut of Richard Lawson. In the comic book, Dracula and his brother, Sebastian, Sebastian Facilis, who in actuality is Radu Selfrumos, fight over resurrecting Manualdi or Sebastian's daughter Maria. They need a fourth vampire for the ritual during the Equality Equinox, which will make vampires all-powerful and allow them to take over the world. Dracula wins, and Manualdi is resurrected in time for the first ritual. The number five vampire on our list of top ten vampires in the world of comic books part two is Nocturna. From the DC Comics database, Nocturna, also known as Natalia Mir Nocturna is an inmate of Arkham Asylum. She is dubbed by the media as Nocturna, the heartless black widow, for her string of alleged murder charges on her husband. In secret, Nocturna is a vampire, as well as a thief and an enemy of Batwoman, who operates primarily in Gotham City. Prior to her incarnation, Natalia Mertenach collected a string of dead husbands. She was in Arkham Asylum for murdering her own husband when it was brought under attack by the Kirk Court of Owls, who were aiming to assassinate Dr. Jeremiah Arkham. Surviving the Night of the Owls, Nocturna remained in Arkham Asylum until released by Wolf Spider during a fight with Batwoman. Though she was given ample opportunity to escape the city, she stayed and was acquitted for the crime that had resulted in her incarceration. When Nocturna aimed to steal a chalice from an exhibition, on Lady Bathroy, she was met with opposition from Batwoman more directly. In the ensuing fight, Nocturna was hit with a, with a batarang in her eye, but managed to escape with the chalice with the help of her lover, Anton Knight. Sometime later, recovered, Natalia was at a dinner when the assassin Killshot attempted to shoot her, accidentally killing Barry Daniels instead, and subsequently infiltrated by Batwoman and Anton Knight, the later in the guise of Night Thief. The number four vampire on our list of top ten vampires in the world of comic books, part two, is Bloodstone. Storm, the Marvel clone of Dracula. Bloodstorm 1 was to be the first of a line of vampiric shock troopers utilized by Hydra's DOA. He was cloned from DNA taken from Dracula and created in a lab by Lieutenant Belial. But as soon as he emerged, he began slaughtering all the Hydra personnel present, including Lieutenant Belial at the hypnotic command of Varney. Powers and Abilities Bloodstorm 1, as a clone of Dracula, has many of his powers but are mostly undeveloped. Like all other vampires, can transform an individual into a vampire by biting them. A special enzyme found only within vampire saliva is responsible for this transformation. After draining all the blood from a victim, the victim enters a death-like state and returns to life three days later. Superhuman strength. Like all vampires, Bloodstorm 1 possesses superhuman strength and superhuman speed. Bloodstorm can run and move at speeds greater than even the finest human athlete. And superhuman stamina. Bloodstorm 1's body is more resistant to the fatigue toxins generated by his muscles during physical activity. He can exert himself. The number three vampire on our list of top ten vampires in the world of 
comic books part two is Marlowe from 30 Days of Night. In the film adaptation, he is the primary antagonist, infecting the town of Barrow, Alaska, to build his vampire army. Marlowe manipulates a depressed drifter known only as the Stranger into killing all the dogs in Barrow because they do not want anyone to escape by dog sled to warn the rest of humanity. Marlowe's agent is then arrested and taken into custody. While in the holding cell, he keeps taunting his captors, saying, They are coming. He is subsequently proven correct when Marlowe and his minions arrive and invade the village, mauling humans to death where they find them. Marlowe instructs his henchmen to take no prisoners and decapitate the humans they kill instead of turning them into vampires because he doesn't want competition or the fledgling vampires to rule at the world of the vampire's existence. Eventually, Marlowe infiltrates the police station where he finds the stranger weeping in fear in a cell. Whilst Marlowe's female second-in-command, Iris, looks on indifferently, Marlowe crouches down and breaks the man's neck. In the comic, Marlowe Roderick is only a supporting character. Marlowe was the elder of a group, a sadistic leader of a pack of vampires who planned the attack on Barrow, Alaska during a cold winter night. He thought he succeeded, but his fellow vampires, especially Vicente become enraged of what he has done. That, given that it went against the vampire's plans of convincing the humans that they are unreal. That led to Marlowe's demise at the hand of Vincenti. The whole concept of this story is that vampires are all over the world, hiding during the day, but coming out of the shadows at night to prey on humans. Unfortunately, when the leader of all vampires learns of Marlowe's plan, he becomes angry and kills Marlowe. The number two vampire on our list of top ten vampires in the world of comic books, part two, is Skinner Sweet from American Vampire. In 1880, Skinner Sweet was a notorious thief and murderer who earned his nickname for his sadism and his love of candy. Unknown to him, he wronged an elitist society of European vampires who hired James Book of the Pinkerton Agency to bring him into hang. Sweet made a daring escape with the help of his gang, but was attacked in the process by one of the vampires, Mr. Percy. He was bitten, and when Percy was shot point blank, some of the vampire's blood fell into Sweet's eye. As a result of the blood transfer, Skinner Sweet became the world's first American vampire. He was stronger than the elitist European vampires and could survive in direct sunlight, unlike them. He is also weakened by gold and not silver. After being stuck in his grave for 20 years, Sweet rose and discovered what he had become. Skinner emerged from his flooded grave when European vampires would have been incapacitated. He immediately went on the warpath, killing everyone he could and going after the people who had wronged him in life. Skinner Skinner also infected an actress who was attacked and nearly killed by his European counterparts. He was soon defeated on a moonless night by James Book and sealed in a collapsed mine. Years later, he would be free again. His gravestone read, Skinner Sweet, 1850 to 1880. Outlaw, killer, defiler of woman, born in Kansas, burns in hell. Skinner Sweet was created by Scott Snyder and Raphael Albuquerque as the central character of the American Vampire series for Vertigo. Sweet's original story was written by Stephen King, who liked Snyder's outline for the series so much that he offered to write that rather than simply an introduction for the book. Due to Sweet's appearance and wild behavior, readers speculated that the character was based on Kid Rock. Snyder denied this in an interview, saying if Sweet was based on any rock star, it was Kurt Cobain. And the number one vampire on our list of the top ten vampires in comic books, part two is Deacon Frost. Deacon Frost is a fictional character appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. He appears in the Tomb of Dracula and is an enemy of Blade. In the comics, Deacon Frost was depicted as a tall, white-haired, late, middle-aged gentleman with red eyes and wearing 1860s Germany period clothing. His doppelganger sported an accent and attire that suggested a southern preacher. The character appeared in the 1998 film Blade, portrayed by Stephen Dorff. Deacon Frost first appeared in the Tomb of Dracula, number 13 in October of 1973, and was created by Marv Wolfman and Gene Cullen. Deacon Frost was allegedly a scientist looking for the key to immortality. For one of his experiences, he kidnapped a young woman in order to inject the victim with the blood of a recently killed vampire. The girl's fiancé broke into the lab, and in the resulting scuffle, Frost was accidentally injected with the blood himself. The result was that Frost became a vampire, but due to the unusual method of becoming one, he was endowed with a unique characteristic. Anyone he turned into a vampire would generate a doppelganger. He could create an unlimited number of doppelgangers by biting each doppelganger, and they would all be under his mental control. Frost intended to use this ability to contend for the position of Lord of Vampires, a position that was presently held by Dracula. Frost is the vampire responsible for the death of Blade's mother. Blade's initial mission is to exact revenge against her killer. It was also Frost who turned Hannibal King into a vampire. Blade and King, while initially distrusting each other, eventually teamed up to fight Frost's army of doppelgangers of 
Blade and King. The two of them manage to defeat and apparently destroy Frost in his underground hideout, stabbing him twice and leaving his body to be consumed as his hideout exploded. And that was our look at the top 10 vampires in the world of comic books, volume 2. If you didn't see the vampire you like on this list, make sure you check out list number 1, which was the first show I ever did on my channel. Hope you enjoyed our list. If you have a favorite vampire in comic books that we didn't talk about, please note it in the comments section below. Subscribe to my channel. Until next time, this is Kevin Gibbons saying check out my shows on YouTube, my comic book reviews, as well as Comics Let's Talk, where we discuss the history of comic books. Until next time, so long. Keep reading those comics. If you love comics as much as I do, you're going to subscribe to my channel. I review comics for Comic Crusaders. I also have my own franchises, Adolescent Radioactive Samurai Platypi and Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter. They're available on Comics Central, Indie Planet, and Comixology. Check them out. Stay tuned to this broadcast for more information. Also, like the Facebook pages for each franchise. Check out my Patreon site for some neat original artwork and shows that you won't find on YouTube.